Oh, Looks like we're on. Yo, do you reckon everybody can hear me? That's the next question. I mean, that'd be good because we're running a mic. We don't know if it works. <laughs> so what we need is uh, if you guys have tuned in, whoever's tuned in, if you can give us a like if you can hear us. The wind is up a little bit as well, which might make your life a little bit difficult. But oh, I shouldn't do. Else. We've got two people watching. Excellent. All right, so those people need to hit us a like if you can hear us, yeah? Otherwise, we'll revert to other means of... <laughs> we'll bring yeah, we're getting, we're getting some likes. Or well, yeah, got cool. one like, so one person can hear us. Thank you. Well, that's all we need. The rest of us can lip read, I guess. <laughs> well, we're out at Billy Farm again. Yeah, so for those people who are watching this post production, we're out here at Billy Farm on another long range shooting course. Oh, let's take a like on you. Yeah, I'll just give you a thumbs up because our family circular saw me cut up some wood for the fire. Right, that's going to be really good for the live video. Yeah. Well, it'll be okay for this. I'll wear it so it'll be great. Plus, that little battery one. So, whoa, we've got, we got some lights going on as well. We've got some LEDs. Feels like we're up to 70 Avengers or something. I could get three more if you want. <laughs> yeah, that's work about three. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So, um. It's more like X Men because you're fucking Deadpool at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Thanks for everybody that actually sent me well wishes and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, good. you look a bit like Deadpool, don't you? Yeah, yeah. like an avocado. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like a fucking burnt avocado. Dude. So, but thank you very much for that. Um, like a drop meat pie. After Anzac Day, I was off for the whole week, so. Um, like an entire face of elbow skin. Yeah, that's right. So, thanks very much for people that actually did drop in uh, or sent me a like. You know, sent me a, message as well, I was got to appreciate it. Uh, cheers for that. But yeah, we're out of the Billy Someone Farm. came off a motorbike at hundred k's an hour and landed in a fucking train fire. That's right, they'll put out my fork. So I've heard it all. Ross was calling the Captain Chemo the other day, so I'm pretty happy with that. Which isn't fair because you haven't really technically had any chemo. I haven't had chemo, I haven't even had really like it's not even that bad. So um, there's plenty of people out there worse than me. Now, what was I going to talk about? Oh, the first one I wanted to talk about tonight was... Oh, fuck. Lynn Caps. Yeah. Oh, I just remember he's got his caps on. Oh, right. I've had the loop old sunglasses now for a little while. I'm going to move you a bit closer. I thought I would do a little bit of a, a... I can't tell whether that's good or not. So they are the Switchback. And they're in the, uh, what are they, the green... Right Iridium or whatever they call it. Um, lenses, now they are the most comfortable pair of sunglasses that I've ever worn. They didn't have a wear in period. They were absolutely brilliant. Um, they've actually taken quite a bit of a beating. The first couple of weeks that I had them, I actually head butted my tray and gouged out the frame there. But the lenses still do not have any scratches on them at all and they get absolutely hammered. So I take them everywhere, I wear them to work. I wear them to the farm, I wear them in, you know, anywhere I go, and they are absolutely brilliant. They're they're still premium feel product, you know, they're better than any of the the name brands. They've still got um, full tension in the in the arms. Yeah. I can so do a torch test with them sometimes. They're still fit. Like blunt force. Fuck off, they more than fucking <laughs> So I paid for these out of my own money, so no, we won't be doing that. Um, but absolutely brilliant. So if you do get, you know, if you are looking for a new set of sunnies and you want to get your hands on something that will last you a fairly long time, like I, about a year I now. I don't think these. they've got lifetime warranty on those. No, they don't. Um, but so not like the rest of the loopholes optics. Yeah, but absolutely awesome. They are they are on par, you know, price wise with your with your uh, Oakleys and. Granites and all those sort of stuff, yeah, but top end brands. Absolutely brilliant. I do believe these ones. Sun, so. I do believe these ones even have the the lenses are ballistic as well, so they sure. can have back one style uh, safety glasses as well. Yeah, yeah. So, which is definitely what you need after everyone would have seen that guy with the 50 BMG that blew up. Well, how was that? It's definitely worthwhile wearing some glasses so, or something. If you guys haven't seen that, that's Kentucky Ballistics, Yank in America, and he's shooting like a big. Single oh. shot brake barrel. 50 it was BMW. one of those servos. Yeah. It lets go catastrophically. Catastrophically. And I think amazing. it's pretty much unanimous. We all think that it was the ammunition that was at fault. It certainly looks as though the case is detonated in the chamber to cause that much damage. So it's not a blockage in the barrel or something like that. So it's uh, 
it's quite catastrophic. The guy's lucky to be alive, uh, but he's also very lucky to have his sight because the big chunk of steel come back and hit him in his eye socket, yeah. fractured his eye socket in three places. And uh, if he hadn't been wearing glasses, he would have lost his eye. So almost certainly he'd have a big you steel get, cup in his embedded in his face. You need to talk. So, certainly worthwhile if you're not wearing sunnies when you're out or glasses of some sort when you're out shooting um i don't know what you're doing but you it's, certainly it's the same deal with people that don't wear any hearing protection I mean, yeah like, that's right yeah. I, I get that there's a lot of people out there that have never done it they've never worn it they always hunt you know it's uncomfortable and all that but you get one set of heat you know years your whole life why ruin them by not wearing any you know like a 30 cent pair of earplugs that you can throw in is better than nothing. A lot of guns come with them for free, yeah. for a good reason. So, yeah, so just, just, just throw them in. Um, you know, me and Zane, we run electronics. Um, but we Certainly do. worthwhile if you're training people. Do you want a pair? Nah, well, you can do we go. So we, we do that, we because we do a lot of training. Obviously we do at least once a month. Um, so if we want to be able to wear them all day. They've got to be comfortable. They've got to be... Um, Good battery life is important for us because we'll be wearing them all day. Yeah, I, I normally go through two sets of batteries with those, one a day yep. when, I'm sh when I'm shooting here. Yeah, right. Because I've got the same ones I've and I'm on my second set of batteries that I've ever had. Yeah, it, I've, it, it might be shit batteries I've or really cheap yeah, I disposables. Use batteries, They're but the 3M Peltors. I've never changed the batteries in my yeah. 3Ms. Um, oh, maybe I've got them turned up a bit as well. But, but I've but also got a set of sports here. I've usually got mine turned up. And they are, I reckon they're actually a little bit more comfortable, but they do treat the batteries a little bit faster. But they've actually got uh, adjustable on each year, I can turn the volume up on each year. So that might be but, a reason as well. So I've got, this is actually my second set, which Dave uses. Um, or did you buy these yourself or something? No, no, no I haven't bought them. Well then these are the other set that I've got. Yeah. Um, which is, I've got three sets floating around somewhere because they're brilliant. Yeah. And, um, and I was using the others that are a little bit cheaper. Um, and um, the bulkier ones, and they're good. They keep the sound down, but they do ring a little bit in your ear. Like they're they're certainly not the same sort of earmuff as a sport tag. But these are much more expensive. So, but these are a much better earmuff. I actually I go, usually go to sleep with these on when I'm out shooting. Um, yeah, well, when you're cruising around, and, and people people's, people's still shooting and whatnot, and I'll still be asleep with a set of these on. So, uh, and the clarity of the sound you get with, um, yeah. like I found, like I could hear birds around me that I've never heard before sort of thing yeah, when yeah. I'm wearing them turned up. And hear people sneak up on you and push. And they're not as affected by the wind too, so the wind mm. running over the microphone doesn't cut them out as well. Absolutely. Much. So yeah. that's really important for us, you know, we do a lot of training and a lot of the time it's in all sorts of sort of weather conditions. So. Yeah. So, and you need to be able to talk to people on uh, people need to be able to hear you and that sort of stuff when you're training. So it's important for us, and it's important when I go out shooting with my mates because we need to be able to communicate. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's whatever. Yeah. So, what do you know about that? Oh, I know bugger all about this one. Apart right. from it is one of our good customers. It's obviously a Weatherby Vanguard in 243. It's a custom build I did a long time ago. Sorry. It looks like some sort of wood. Yeah. How long ago did I do that? Stop. Oh. You haven't engraved it, so it would be a while. Started Dirt life as a uh, started life as a uh, sub MOA. Is that right? Yes. So, Fuck. which is an awesome yeah. setup. Because you got that guy. sub MOA, and we couldn't get it to shoot, could we? No, no. You had dramas. You spent so much time on it. In the end, you said, "Hey, the guys at Weatherby it. tried to help us, but yeah. it seemed to work for them. We just couldn't get it to shoot, could we? No. What type of barrel is it? It's a TSA. TSA. So I think it's a 24 inch TSA heavy barrel. Yeah. Bluted, that's why the bore end's taken out to float the barrel uh, with a custom muzzle brake on the front. Six flutes. Pretty much, is it seven, is it? Yeah, it's got seven. Um, pretty much cuts the recoil down to fuck all. Yeah, nothing. 22 kicks more than yeah. that. Seven. Yeah, so seven flutes is typically speaking maximum weight reduction. Like it's that max trade off between weight reduction and rigidity. Looks a bit. Um, it's a pain in the ring to fit for someone like me who does it to fit. Um, but they end up looking good. Yeah. I don't know how well this will come up, but Zane's actually obviously fitted the barrel and it's got the, f the center of the flute, so it's actually come up square. But oh, that's actually that's at the top. Yeah, I, the, well, you did that on the mine. The way that I fit barrels. You did that on mine too. 
That's fluke, yeah? No. Nah. Where? It's, no, no. The way that I keep barrels. Take the credit, Dan. Take the credit. In the machine that I do it in, I can't. No, because cunts will be wanting me to fucking get barrels and <laughs> flukes the time up. And it doesn't always end up like that, yeah? But if you want me to do it, I can do it. But it doesn't. It but costs it, a bit extra because it's a lot of extra fucking. Oh, yeah. Right? And he, yeah? he doesn't like it. Polishing it. Can polish it. Fuck off. Right? <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Actually, I didn't hand polish that action. No. Which is probably something I should have done for him. Um, it's also running the VXL loop hold on it. I've made them for a few years now. 2007, I think the VXL's come out. Excellent go. So for those of you that don't know the VXL, it's the one with the cutout. So it's large objective, no, but cutout so it fits over the top of the uh, barrel so you can run it a lot. So that one's a 50 or a 56 mil front objective, 50. but the scope height is only 44. Yeah. So the, has the barrel been fully floated? Yes. yes. Well and truly. No, only just. The barrel doesn't touch anything by any imagination. And you can't shoot it left handed because it's thumb off. <laughs> well, that's a fucking lie, I can shoot anything. You can't hit anything, though. No, well, no one asked me if I could hit it. They only asked me if I could shoot it. Yeah. So, but that's one of our custom up. muzzle brakes that we did. Like, that's bespoke, yeah? So, uh, the client came to me with an idea in his head, and I drew something out, and he said, That's what I want, and that's what it ended up at. So, it's a big curve on the front, like a tank brake. And it's raked back at 30 degrees. And uh, Gotta bring that a bit really, closer and profile really them. tames down the recoil. Yeah. That sound like giggity giggity in the background. It's actually, you can tell this is one of my earlier jobs because, well, I can tell because now that I look at it, there's a heap of things that I would do differently nowadays. But it's not bad for young Zane. For young Zane. As opposed to old day now. Yeah. Well, I would have built this when I was 23. Yeah, fair enough. And a 23 year old fucking knows everything, doesn't he? Yeah, well, look at Ross. Ross. How's Ross? 21? We've lost 21. volume. 21? Have we? What's done plus 10? 10. 21? He's <laughs> stupid. He's stupid. Oh, nah. I got 22 okay. years of fucking yeah. schooling experience. I graduated nice. that twice. Yeah. I, I wish I know everything now that I knew when I was 23. Yeah. I mean, if I met the 23. Four and a half, four day. But something else that's interesting about this is that you would have seen that on Loophole VX3 scopes, this power selector has a screw on the end of it. And you might be asking, what's that for? And what's that can for, I take it out? I don't know what it's for. Oh, can I take it out? No, you can't. No. I spoke to the guys at Loophole Custom Shop, and if you take that screw out, it'll let all the gas out of the scope. Uh. So I can't make an extended lever for the VX3s that anchors off that. But the guys at the Loophole Custom Shop will actually swap that whole thing out for the VX3, the VX3i power selector, the LRP power selector. And the LRP power selector, you get an extended. Uh, magnification throw lever which is really which is really much great. easier to use so and it costs about 250 bucks roughly well, well, well it's pretty cheap because what they do is they get the scope they strip it down they swap that part over put it all back together repurge the scope see at the same time you're getting your scope repurged um and it sends back in its full lifetime warranty so yeah. it's done which is better than if, if i did it and, and i had this conversation with the guys if i did it the question, like, if, if something was to go wrong with the scope as a result of what I'd done, then it wouldn't be warranted. But if it's all done by a local custom shop, and like, and to be honest, 250 bucks for an extended throw lever. Yeah. Well, I would have probably charged 200 bucks for an extended throw lever anyway. And yeah, what well, the other side of the loophole custom shop is trying to make one, you know, like they know what they're doing. They're highly professional. Mm -hmm. They're great guys. No, they are. They're good. good and people. to be honest, guys that buy loopholes, you know, and me and Dane, we're loophole sort of guys, so you know we try and sell loopholes to everyone because we think they're a quality product. But a lot of people don't use the off the uh, the services that they offer. You know, pretty much every new loophole now is going to be CDS. You know, every loophole is going to be CDS now. So use it, get yourself a load, get yourself set up, and then do the paperwork. Get yourself that custom dial. That custom dial is quick and easy for them to do. But it'll also make your shooting, especially hunters, it'll make your shooting a hell of a lot easier. So all you gotta do is dial it to the distance. 
and it's got the distance written on the tariff. Yeah. Like it's it's it's, it's a piece of yeah, yeah, right? yeah. and it's one, one point five. Two or it's one, two, two point five, three, three. You get an option point if you want. You can have two, three, four, five, yeah, six, seven. That can, gets you out even further. You so. can pick it. There's no. Well, unless you completely yeah. fuck it wrong, they're not going to do it. The but the better your data, and the so the better your data, the more data that you give them, the better they'll make the tariff for you. Yeah, yeah. So It'll be more accurate for what you do. But make sure you get the right tariff. We had we have had a couple of guys ring up and they. Older loopholes, and they didn't know what turrets were on it, and they've gone to the wrong turrets and turned up, and they yeah. don't know what to do with it. But if you bring it into us, we know all about CDS and that sort of stuff. Bring it to us, we'll sort it all out. You're not going to have a problem. Did we bed this? Take it out. I'd say I would have bedded it. Yeah, no. Um, yes, you did. Yeah. Yeah, I can see the. I can't see the. You can say that that's I'm... probably a Mark. Mark Seven. VX Seven. No. What? Mark seven. Is it the time oh. the, the time you spent on it? <laughs> so, yeah, it's getting a bit cold out here to be honest. So, well it's getting darker earlier. Yeah, yeah. So actually um so I was out here last night as well where it rained all night. Bill was out the night before and Tuesday night. Yes. And we actually got forty four mils of rain overnight on on Tuesday night. On Tuesday night, which is un Fathomable. There was a bloody river running through the middle of the farm where we live. So when we first bought the property, we had that much rain in February. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like it's, no, I mean, it's like we had really early rains. This year we've had it actually in the growing season because everyone's seeded out here already. So it's really good for the farmers. Just got to hope we're going to get a bit more rain towards the end of the season yeah. as the season goes on. So got to be careful. Not, got to be careful not to get. Not to get. Got to be careful not to get bogged tomorrow. But yeah, there, yeah, there yeah, are. Yeah. Did you bring out your recovery gear? I bought out the recovery gear just in case. Yeah. But, the, so, but they're um, the show I've known, Garen, just to put um hazard signs around puddles on the roads yeah, out so, here. Yeah. It's that bad. There, there's water in the lake, you know. There's on the salt lakes out here. There's, it, it's it's actually called the hammer, which is yeah. really, absolutely great. Yeah. What else have we got to talk about? Zero tech. Zero tech. So we've got some zero techs on the shelf. I think, uh, I think there's a couple of three to nines and a couple of four to sixteen. Just as I was leaving yesterday, so mm. I'm not really sure what it is. I'm pretty certain there's a couple of vengeance. Yeah. Uh, three to nines and thrive. Thrive. Yeah. Uh, but if you're looking at one of those, get in there. I think it's a four to sixteen that thrives and three to nines in the vengeance. Get in there. Really great little scopes. Um, beautiful value for money. Like lifetime warranty, no questions asked. Australian company. Not made in Australia, but Australian owned company. Well, they're also Australian, so, so they say Australian designed. Yeah, so they work really, really well. Um, we are sort of planning to get a couple together for a bit of a torture test. I'm talking about actually. They're going to be bringing them out with the parallax on the right hand side. Is that right? That's a bit interesting. Well, for the type of shooting that he teaches, he reckons it's better. Yeah, but it yeah. depends on your technique. Yeah, okay. But the way that we teach, it's not. No. But it depends what you like. Yeah, okay. But I right. like the concept behind it because you'd be lying behind the gun and you could make your adjustments. A right hander can make their adjustments on the scope without taking, without the taking their eye off the stock, you know, like eye off the scope. Like, if you keep looking through the scope, you don't have to reach across or anything like that. So for some people, that'll be, that'll be better. It means you have to reach over to get parallax, but it doesn't affect me because I'm almost standard. I can stay on the scope. Still see what I'm doing. Yeah, you can. Yeah. But no, they are. They're they're a fantastic little setup. They've um they've got a few uh, higher end. I don't want to call them high end because they're not. You know, but their thirteen fourteen hundred dollar first focal plane scope, which is their the Trace and Trace Advanced. Trace Advanced or something. Yeah. Well, they're, they're uh, certainly. I mean, optics quality. Optics quality wise, they're probably not going to hold a candle to a loophole or something like that. No. But they've got all the features that you need if you're shooting during the day. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like. Yes, at night, you're not going to be able to crank it up to 27 power and, and expect to see a box in a spotlight. It's no. just not going to happen. Yeah, it's just going to be way too dark. Although you I, don't have to dial your magnification back. Although I do want to get out and actually have a try with one. Is there a bit of light yeah. around when, though? When, but, when mine gets here. Yeah, but it's one of well, those... we could have bought one earlier this weekend. Yeah. It's one of those things. Um, the other one that is really You know what I want to do, and I will do this eventually, yeah. is get a whole series of scopes, yeah. And seal them inside pieces of PVC, 
and then get all their VIPs out here and get them to all look through all the scopes and grade them. Yeah, yeah so and that way you can't is. see what it is. No. So there's no bias there. It takes that bias out of it. Yeah. The only thing that we'll, we'll have to make sure our VIPs don't know the difference by looking through the reticle. We're because just going to have to try and get all duplex reticles. Or, or I was going to say, because me and you, we could look through any number of scopes and go, I know what that is based I on. I know that reticle. Purely yeah. on that reticle. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the, the concept is we've got to try and make it as sort of asking all the manufacturers to make us a scope with no reticle in it. Yeah. What we've got to do is you've got to ask our VIPs, look, try not to figure out what the scope is. Just yeah, look through just it, look through and it. just tell me. Great. You know, we'll have a we'll have a, a target down the end there, yeah. and we'll have we'll have a series of targets in with the backgrounds different levels of grey. Yeah. With what a number in. I mean, you, you just read? tell us what ones can you read? You know, yeah. like. And we can do that middle so of the day. You're just using ambient light. You know, ambient. Yeah. Yeah. Middle of the day. Afternoon, dusk, you know, yeah. and then well, we're going to have to test it on a heap of different levels, yeah. So optics quality, but also strength. We'll put them on some big guns and shoot them and see yeah. what falls apart, see what comes off. Um, I'd be keen to see, you know, test their waterproofness and their fogging. Like yeah, they, they great. all, they all claim to be anti-fog, waterproof, oil resistant. I'd like to test that. Like put a Bushnell and a Zero Tech and a couple of the lower. I wouldn't doubt a loophole. Yeah. The lower end bushels. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't doubt what? a loophole or a night force or a Sorosky or something like that. What do you fellas I reckon? You know, you reckon you'd like to see something like that. That would be something that we would be willing to do, but I think optics quality is the big it, one. Then mm. we'd love to do it for but, us. Yeah. Uh, another another Zero Tech product that's just about to come out is their red dot. Yeah, I was gonna um, mention that. Yeah, Zero Tech put out a video a couple of days ago. And yeah. Very much, they look very similar to the Aimpoint style or the Bushnell Tower. Bushnell style, Terrace, yeah. Where they've got the, yeah, little tiny body. It's, it's a little, little tube. tube with it's the, not a yeah. Delta Point style. I'm going to move you a little closer. It's not a reflex. It's, 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 it's a proper red dot. Yeah. Um, price wise, I'm not sure what they're running at at the moment. That's sort of. Very similar Very similar to a Bushnell, maybe yeah, a little bit cheaper. Be, um, but I think they're sub 300 bucks. Um, I'm not sure what size red dots are in there, but I believe it's a three over three. Um, And I don't think there's an option for going for either a smaller or a bigger dot, but watch that space because I'm not 100% sure on it. But that's something else that, you know, for you guys that do um, pick hunting, uh, quick acquisition stuff, then a red dot's, you know, perfect. You know, that's all you want to do. You just want to be able to no, pick you up to the Oh, sorry. Pick me no, up. that's fine. We can see you well. Show it up. Find the target. Put the red dot yeah. on. Shoot him. So, but I reckon we should bring one if we get him in time for the next marksman course. Give it a shot, maybe. I don't know. You know what? I still haven't done like a proper. I've shot it, but the 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 RDS from the loop bowl. We still got one there at the shop mm. with a two four three with the CDS dial. dial on. With the CDS dial. That we were given to review. We weren't giving it to review. Oh, I've been giving it. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah. It's, uh, we own it. <laughs> we own okay. it now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, but, but be... yeah, it was sent to us to review, and I did review it. And I have spoken to a lot of clients about it. I just haven't done a formal yeah. promotional video for it. And for those of you that don't know what the loophole RDS is, it's another red dot sight, hence the RDS. But it is a little bit bigger than your normal one, so it's it does look like a little miniature scope, a little miniature optic. Yeah, However, it's not it's like an EOTech no, like size. So it it's, would be. It's not. It's bigger than a micro. Yeah. Like a micro. Like a H2, it's almost H2 twice the size of an H2, H2, I reckon. No, it's yeah. bigger than that. Bigger? Bigger yeah. than twice? Longer. Okay. Uh, yeah. But really good value for money. Brilliant setup. It's got. Oh, I reckon it's about two point one times the size. Yeah, it's it's bigger. It's yeah, bigger. just fucking pick one up. And, it but it uses the same style of turrets that a scope uses. So you just unscrew them and you can adjust them. You don't have it's to not have like a little tool or anything like that. So it's very very easy to use. Um, it's got that uh, Picatinny Weaver style mount underneath it that comes in te uh, Tegel. Yeah. So. It'll just go straight on, and like I said, it's been RDS, ah, uh, CDS already. So we've got it set up on a two four three running eighty seven grain V Max, um, and we said I've got a zero it in properly, and then yeah. So we sent the boys the over through. at the Loophole Custom Shop a a form, you know, told them what we were shooting, what height, what speed, all that crap, and then uh, they sent it out. But that's yeah. all the important crap. It's not crap. Put good crap in, you get good crap out. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, no, it's, 
speaking of like, we're, we're, we're going through a lot of different stuff here. If you had, for the rest of your life, one... We already went over this. No, no, we haven't. Right now, one rifle, one setup, that's all you can have, what would you go? Right now in WA, I'd have a 300 PRC, but that's because basically it's one of the biggest calibers you can get, and you're going to shoot the widest range of animals with it, and you're going to shoot the widest range of competitions with it. See, it's already changed. There was something else last time. I'd still have a 3 throat Lapour over it, but you just can't get one license to it. <laughs> and why not? We'll wait and see. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, there's um, there's a there's arguments for a lot of different calibers, and I'd, we'd be interested to hear what you guys say. Um, certainly, I I would recommend a like I would I would say a seven mil or a thirty cal would shoot the biggest range of game. Technically, I've only brought this up to make our viewers, you know, give them some interactive, give them some bite. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, tell us we're wrong. What would you have? Don't say six. Well, are you still getting an LA 105? No. Why not? Because I could, no. Okay. I'd love to, I'd love to, but um, A, I've run out of room in my safe. Like, I can't even put the 7 mil in there. So that sort of stays at work. Um, and, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm actually thinking. He's got an ESS, yeah, on his 7 mil punchy, but it's got like a 30 inch barrel and a big muzzle brake. Yeah. It's not going to fit in your safe. It doesn't So I am working on a detachable rear stock. Now you can't have folding stocks. No. So what I'm working on is a detachable rear stock. You flick a lever and you take the butt stock off and then it fits on the side of the gun. It doesn't fold onto the side of the gun, but it fits on the side of the gun. Maybe it fits on the forend. Maybe you, you take the butt off and then clip it onto the forend so it's down the side of the gun. It doesn't fold on the side of the gun, but it's down the side of the gun and that way it's compact and then you can put it in your gun side. Hmm. That's a great idea. And you can shoot pistol competition with it. No, not folding. You can't have folding and you can... it's not collapsible either. Collapsible is not that big a deal. No, but it Because on even when it's... Well, there's no hard and fast rooms on it though. No, but if it was something like... Um, like that stupid bloody M2000 200 intervention where it's got the two rods and it collapses like right up and the butt stock ends up on the trigger, then the cops would have some sort of say about that. But could they? I, I mean, I mean... What would happen in that instance? Well, the problem is that I find the problem is you'd get charged, and then they just leave it for the, the courts to sort out. But that's not the role of the courts. With the length of the barrel and everything like that, even if it did do that, it's not concealable. Well, the police policy has changed since, and I don't know if I've told you guys already. It used to be like 16 and a half inch. That was sort of the unwritten rule. It was sort of an agreement we had between repairers and, and licensing, and then it was formalised at 400 mil, which is actually shorter. But 400 mil was the shortest barrel that you could have legally in WA, and now it's you can have down to 325, but only if the overall length of the gun is more than 75 centimeters. But you can't have a gun that with a folding buttstock, even if it folds down and it's still longer than 75 centimeters. Well, you have a so you can have you can't have a folding buttstock, but you can have something that's even more concealable that you don't have to refold the stock out to shoot. Some so of the... So it just doesn't make sense. Break, like, there's a lot of brake barrel air rifles out there that don't have a 400 mil barrel. Well, I could get a 400 mil barrel on my Ruger number one and that'd be fucking short, yeah? That'd be a nice little kind of big kick on Well, it depends on what color it is. Well, it's in 416 now. I was going to say, well, you're if still... I was going to shorten it down to 400... <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to shorten a 416 down to 400 mil. Well, it'd be a good little scrub gun. If you shoot bare... <laughs> Nah, you you want something really underbore, yeah? You'd want something like a 4570? Like a 450 Marlin or something. <gasps> 50 AE. 50 <laughs> AE in a fucking single shot. 400 mil barrel. A little show. How awesome would that be as a pig gun? That'd be alright, actually. But you need more than a single shot if you're going to shoot pigs. You know, not if it's 50 AE. Well, that, pig, it? that pig's going down. That pig's getting the fucking It's like a hit yeah. by a brick. <laughs> Israelis made it to shoot holes in bloody Car engine engines. blocks and think it'll shoot a pig all right. Yeah, yeah it'll do all right. Yeah. Unless you miss. Yeah, well, there's then, always that. And then you're fucked. <laughs> well, then we just need to make the butt stop with a big spike on it so you can. <laughs> if you miss. A bayonet. Then you just it's going to say put a bayonet on it, yeah. A bayonet. <laughs> and I can do that with this because it's not my gun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering about that. 
But yeah, throw like it out there. Number four bayonet on a really number one. Throw it out there. If you guys were left with just one rifle combination or one firearm, the rest of your life, what would you pick? And why? The why is always the interesting bit. I actually don't know if I can answer that question. I think for what I do, I'd probably just I'd be happy with sticking with some sort of six, six and a half, but it'd be like a six point five by fifty five or something like that. Yeah, I still think my 7x64 is one of the handiest rifles I've got. That was I've nice. got to get a scope base on it. I've got to get a scope base on it and get it out here and shoot it a bit more. That, that was a nice rifle. But it's a really it's handy nice. rifle. Yeah, it's a bit long, really. Yeah. Actually, that, that little um, that little RCM that you've got too, that little Seiko that you finished the other way. Yeah, it's, but that's only for short range. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I suppose if you're hunting, it doesn't matter. You don't yeah. need a long barrel. But, it's but that nice. concept is exactly what you want. Like yeah. like the SV, SVT that we had to start. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice little Two, three, a little heavy, short barrel. Eight inch barrel? Eight inch barrel, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Short barrel. They don't make them anymore, stuff. Kimber, like boring. If anybody from Kimber's watching, get back on them. <laughs> Remember they did those, um, Kimber used to do their, oh, Blair board. That little, like, police. Yeah. They were a nice little set up too. So it's dark as fuck out there, yeah? And I'm looking in my shadow, and I can still see the dots on those targets. Really? Yeah. It's an awesome. Only just. I'd need a light meter to try and work out how much light we've got. Yeah. And I can still see the dots, but. Well, I mean, we're in the light because we're getting shined by the sun at the moment. It was actually quite bright when we first started. Yeah. Palmer's turned up and he's put his bloody LED lights on us and I swear to God it's like being on the face of the sun. Right. He's still got his um, GoPros going. Yeah, he sets up his GoPros around the farm and he's apparently caught me. One's got a little light on it though. Walking around. around. Yeah, the one that he puts outside my tent doesn't. No? No. The one he sets up outside your tent. He, tents, he, sets, <laughs> he sets up one outside my tent, I'm certain to catch me pissing in the night. I'm certain he does. Because that's what everyone wants to He say. reckons he's got footage. So... <laughs> He keeps that in his own special vault though. Yeah, so apparently everyone's seen your penis except you. Except mate. me, yeah. <laughs> I've seen it for ages. I know it's there. Somewhere. Every now and then. Alright, well I think that's the end of Friday Night Live because I'm going to go get something to eat and uh, something to drink. And, Thanks for uh, tuning in. Um, play some cards. Remember, tomorrow we are not open. Um, unfortunately. Yeah, closed. Nikki's crook. And man's owner out the farm, so there's not much we can do there. Um, so don't come past tomorrow <coughs> at all. Um, if you need to, leave a message on the phone. We'll see if we can get back to you on Monday. Yeah, we will. Um, we'll get back to you on Monday. Yeah. This is my style still. Right here. Oh, I appreciate it. I think that's about it for us. All right. so, thanks, thanks very guys. much. Have a good weekend. Talk and to we'll you next catch week. You next week. Yeah.